It's a two-year operation, more than $8 million seized in that time, and 100 kilos in cocaine plus other drugs. Drugs stopped from entering further into the United States. Organizations operate, in my opinion, off of two things, need and greed. The need to bring their product into the United States, as well as the greed to reap the benefits of their uh, of their distribution. And this case was no different. The Valley is the entry point to the hub, San Antonio. So this was a major hit for this criminal organization. Individuals had acquired a substantial amount of properties in the Rio Grande Valley area. Uh, they had acquired um, multiple vehicles and assets that in total uh, we were able to uh, secure indictments for $15 million in properties, as well as significant seizures at the time of the arrest. 2.5 million seized in one day. Richard Sanchez is the special agent in charge of the Rio Grande Valley sector for the DEA. Prior to the execution of these arrest warrants, agents within uh, our DEA Corpus Christi office and our DEA Brownsville office had spent a significant amount of time investigating uh, a very dangerous and violent criminal organization operating in the lower Rio Grande Valley area. The mission, as Sanchez reminds us, is always to reduce drug-related violence as well as focusing on the most dangerous individuals causing harm to our neighborhoods and more deaths on U.S. soil due to drugs. Unfortunately, as a result of we see these increase in seizures, we're also seeing an increase in overdose-related deaths. Uh, according to the RCDC, more than 94,000 people have died in a 12-month period. Uh, so that is substantial and goes to show how important it is that de DEA is dedicated to reducing the drug-related violence and working toward lowering drug overdose deaths. The joint operation with local, state, and other federal partners allowed the DEA to hold the line right at the border, charging those involved with possession with the intent to distribute cocaine and money laundering. We're the first line of defense operating uh, here in Texas, as well as, you know, for the rest of the United States. And it's incumbent upon us to ensure and, and, and let the public know that we're out doing everything we can to target the most dangerous individuals and organizations who are causing harm to our neighborhoods and communities. The more we learn about this case, the more disturbing it becomes. The victim was the woman's five-year-old son. His name was Dominic Aguilar Acevedo. The mother, 25-year-old Nicole Aguilar, was arrested by Palm Beach, Florida deputies on Saturday. Aguilar's boyfriend, 26-year-old Daniel Garcia, was arrested Friday in Miami-Dade County. Now, here's the chain of events that led to their arrest. According to court documents, Dominic was killed at this Woodspring Suites near Joint Base San Antonio on July 24th. Aguilar allegedly said she witnessed Garcia physically abusing Dominic for three weeks. That's the length of time they had been here in San Antonio. On the night of his death, Aguilar told police Garcia hit Dominic so hard he bounced off the wall and hit the floor. Aguilar says Dominic later vomited what she described as a black and brown liquid and died a short time later. Authorities say hotel surveillance video shows Garcia walking down the stairs with Dominic's lifeless body during the early hours of July 25th. Deputies say the couple then drove to Colorado and buried Dominic's body in a ravine in an area called Berthet Pass. The two were reportedly camping at a campsite nearby. They then allegedly drove through Mexico until they got to Costa Rica. That's where Aguilar is from. Aguilar's mom asked where Dominic was that's when she allegedly confessed what they had done. Aguilar's mom contacted SAPD and told them what happened. The police report goes on to say Aguilar and her mother went with FBI agents to the campsite just last week on August 25th to recover the body. The Weld County coroner performed an autopsy. The cause of death is not yet known, but the coroner says there was apparent trauma to the body. We know that Aguilar and Garcia have other children. It isn't clear how many, but you could tell from Aguilar's social media, she at least has another young daughter. The police report says when asked why Aguilar didn't seek medical attention for Dominic, she says that she was too eager to be in a relationship.
Saws expects to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to buy generators for its pump stations. We've learned they've been looking at diesel generators from Caterpillar and natural gas generators from a Houston company called Enchanted Rock. Water didn't come out of Francine Romero's faucets for four days during the freeze. Like many Texans, she resorted to collecting melted snow just to flush toilets. Whatever it is they can do to ensure that when there's a power failure, that those pumps keep going, that would just be so important. SAWS estimates it will cost $200 million to purchase backup generators for 63 pump stations and up to $500 million if it buys more for its wastewater treatment system. We'd love to see the power that those are able to produce to help the electrical grid on all the days that we really don't need it specifically for the water pumping stations. You can see some of the... Saws visited a Houston company we reported on earlier this summer called Enchanted Rock, which helped keep power flowing to numerous HEB stores during the winter storm. The company told us its generators are reliable because their underground pipes are protected from extreme temperatures, but Saws still has concerns. The whole reason we started to lose electrical power in the state was because the natural gas system was failing. So what we cannot do is put natural gas generators at our pumping stations if we don't have absolute certainty that that fuel supply will be there. SAWS is also considering generators that run on diesel fuel. CEO Robert Puente recently toured USAA's emergency power facility, which relies on diesel generators made by Caterpillar. But there are questions with diesel. For example, could fuel be trucked in when roadways are frozen? We can store large amounts of diesel, but at some point in time, depending how long we'd have to run those generators, we'll be trucking fuel in to keep those operational as well. The city of Houston also confirmed to News 4 that 20% of its diesel generators failed to fire up during winter storm Uri. SAWS will be putting out a request for bids and a new state law passed during this year's session requires them to submit a plan by March. SAWS says it wouldn't purchase all of the generators at once, but rather in phases, and it's searching for help to pay for them, perhaps with money from the infrastructure bill to reduce the impact on ratepayers.